Morning all, thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's March the 22nd today, it's Paddy here. I hope this message finds you and your families doing well. Our readings for today will come from Numbers chapters 33 to 35. We'll finish the book of Numbers very soon. Uh, today's reading's a little bit longer. I will also read from Luke chapter 5. We'll start Psalm chapter 65 and we'll continue in Proverbs chapter 11. Uh, actually, correction, today is the second to last day in Numbers. We'll finish the book of Numbers tomorrow. Uh, but before we get into our readings, let's pray. Lord God, please bless your word to me and to those who are following along. In Jesus' name, amen. So before we get into the Old Testament, let's go to Luke's account of the gospel. Starting in Luke chapter 5, verse 12, it says, In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster, and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus, he often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. One day, while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, Young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, Who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So, I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, Oh, we have seen amazing things today. Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. All right, that's our reading from the uh, from Luke's account of the gospel. Let's go back into the Old Testament, our second to last day in the book of Numbers. Let's read starting from chapter 33, verse 40. And there are a few names, so you're going to have to bear with me. I can't pronounce them too well, but I'll try my best. At that time, the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev in the land of Canaan, heard that the people of Israel were approaching his land. Meanwhile, the Israelites left Mount Hor and camped at Zalmanah. Then they left Zalmanah and camped at Punon. They left Punon and camped at Oboth. They left Oboth and camped at Eabarim, on the border of Moab. They left Eabarim and camped at Debon Gad. They left Debon Gad and camped at Alman Diblathim. They left Alman Diblathim and camped in the mountains east of the river near Mount Nebo. They left the mountains east of the river and camped on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho. Along the, the Jordan River, they camped from 
Beth Jeshimoth as far as the meadows of Acacia on the plains of Moab. While they were camped near the Jordan River on the plains of Moab opposite Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan River into the land of Canaan, you must drive out all the people living there. You must destroy all their carved and molten images and demolish all their pagan shrines. Take possession of the land and settle in it, because I have given it to you to occupy. You must distribute the land among the clans by sacred lot and in proportion to their size. A larger portion of land will be allotted to each of the larger clans, and a smaller portion will be allotted to each of the smaller clans. The decision of the sacred lot is final. In this way, the portions of land will be divided among your ancestral tribes. But if you fail to drive out the people who live in the land, those who remain will be like splinters in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will harass you in the land where you live, and I will do to you what I had planned to do to them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give these instructions to the Israelites. When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your special possession, these will be the boundaries. The southern portion of your country will extend from the wilderness of Zin along the edge of Edom. The southern boundary will begin on the east at the Dead Sea. It will then run south past Scorpion Pass in the direction of Zin. Its southernmost point will be Kadesh Barnea, from which it will go to Hazar Adar and on to Asmon. From Asmon, the boundary will turn toward the brook of Egypt and end at the Mediterranean Sea. Your western boundary will be the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. Your northern boundary will begin at the Mediterranean Sea and run east to Mount Hor, then to Lebo Hamath, and on through Zedad and Zephron to Hazai Nan. This will be your northern boundary. The eastern boundary will start at Hazar Inan and run south to Shephan, then down to Ribla on the east side of Ain. From there the boundary will run along the eastern edge of the Sea of Galilee and then along the Jordan River to the Dead Sea. These are the boundaries of your land. Then Moses told the Israelites, This territory is the homeland you are to divide among yourselves by sacred lot. The Lord has commanded that the land be divided among the nine and a half remaining tribes. The families of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have already received their grants of land on the east side of the Jordan River, across from Jericho toward the sunrise. And the Lord said to Moses, Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun are the men designated to divide the grants of land among the people. Enlist one leader from each tribe to help them with the task. These are the tribes and the names of the leaders. The leader of the tribe of Judah is Caleb, son of Jephunneh. The leader of the tribe of Simeon is Shemuel, son of Abihud. The leader of the tribe of Benjamin is Elidad, son of Kislon. The leader of the tribe of Dan is Buki, son of Jogli. The leader of the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, is Haniel, son of Ephod, the leader of the tribe of Ephraim, son of Joseph, is Kemuel, son of Shiftan. The leader of the tribe of Zebulun is Elizaphan, son of Panach. The leader of the tribe of Issachar is Paltiel, son of Azran. The leader of the tribe of Asher is Ahihud, son of Shilomi. And the leader of the tribe of Naphtali is Pedahel, son of Amihud. These are the men the Lord has appointed to, to divide the grants of land in Canaan among the Israelites. While Israel was camped beside the Jordan on the plains of Moab across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the people of Israel to give to the Levites from their property certain towns to live in, along with the surrounding pasture lands. These towns will be for the Levites to live in, and the surrounding lands will provide pasture for their cattle, flocks, and other livestock. The pasture land assigned to the Levites around these towns will extend 1,500 feet from the town walls in every direction. Measure off 3,000 feet outside the town halls in every direction, east, south, west, north, with a town at the centre. This area will serve as the larger pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge, where a person who has accidentally killed someone can flee for safety. 
in addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, 48 towns with the surrounding pasture land will be given to the Levites. These towns will come from the property of the people of Israel. The larger tribes will be given will give more towns to the Levites. Sorry, let's start again. The, the larger tribes will give more towns to the Levites, while the smaller tribes will give fewer. Each tribe will give property in proportion to the size of its land. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities of refuge to which people can flee if they have killed someone accidentally. These cities will be places of protection from a dead person's relatives who want to avenge the death. The slayer must not be put to death before being tried by the community. Designate six cities of refuge for yourselves, three on the east side of the Jordan River and three on the west in the land of Canaan. These cities are for the protection of Israelites, foreigners living among you, and traveling merchants. Anyone who accidentally kills someone may flee there for safety. But if someone strikes and kills another person with a piece of iron, it is murder and the murderer must be executed. Or if someone with a stone in his hand strikes and kills another person, it's murder, and the murderer must be put to death. Or if someone strikes and kills another person with a wooden object, it is murder, and the murderer must be put to death. The victim, the victim's nearest relative is responsible for putting the murderer to death. When they meet, the avenger must put the murderer to death. So if someone hates another person and pushes him or throws a dangerous object at him when he dies, it is murder. Or if someone hates another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is murder. In such cases, the avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility or throws something that unintentionally hits another person or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone. Though they were not enemies and the person dies... If this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the avenger, the victim's nearest relative. The community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled. There he must remain until the death of the high priest, who was anointed with sacred oil. But if the slayer ever leaves the limits of the city of refuge and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him, it will not be considered murder. The slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer may return to his own property. These are legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation, wherever you may live. All murderers must be put to death but only if evidence is presented by more than one witness. No one may be put to death on the testimony of one witness. Also, you must never accept a ransom payment for the life of someone judged guilty of murder and subject to execution. Murderers must always be put to death, and never accept a ransom payment from someone who has fled to a city of refuge, allowing a slaver to return slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest. This will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted, for murder pollutes the land, and no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder. You must not defile the land where you live, for I live there myself. I am the Lord who lives among the people of Israel. All right. Let's go to Psalm chapter 65. This psalm is for the choir director. It's a song. It's a psalm of David. And David says, What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What festivities await us inside your holy temple? You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. O oh God, our Saviour, you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. You formed the mountains by your power and armed yourself with mighty strength. You quieted the raging oceans with their pounding waves and silenced the shouting of the nations. Those who live at the ends of the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, 
you inspire shouts of joy. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain, for you have ordered it so. You drench the ploughed ground with rain, melting the clods and levelling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. All right. Our next and final reading is Proverbs chapter 11, only verse 23 today, but it is a wise saying, so listen carefully. The godly can look forward to a reward, while the wicked can expect only judgment. The godly can look forward to a reward, but the wicked can expect only judgment. All right, those are our readings for today. Thanks for tuning in. I do tune in tomorrow. Numbers, not numbers, March 23, as we finish the book of Numbers. I will begin in the fifth book of the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, tomorrow. Um, have a great day if you're listening to this in the morning, or a peaceful night's sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. Tune in tomorrow, have a great day, have a great sleep, and as usual we pray. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>